Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Cherney, and you are watching Social Media TV. If you haven't had a chance to click like or subscribe, click like and subscribe now below so that you can stay tuned with all the up-to-date information about what goes on in the world of social media and what is hosted on this show. Now, today we are talking about Brittany Booker. Brittany Booker, many of you may have already been aware of her life and what happened to her, her tragic end. And you may say, well, why are you sharing this? This was already done over and over and over again. We already know about it. You all know that in the world of social media, on this show, we highlight what goes on and we share current events. Not always about celebrities, not what you hear on the regular news or the TV every day. We only feature things that we can offer a different perspective or even a more in-depth perspective so that we can keep news authentic, clear, and different. Well, this was one that definitely caught my attention and the reason why you'll see when we discuss it. So stay tuned so that you can hear things that you haven't heard before on any other channel other than this one. Brittany Booker, as you know, is a mother of six. And as many people have reported, she was protecting allegedly a friend who was being in a domestic violence relationship with Terry L. Jackson Jr. And while she was in, this friend was allegedly in this relationship with Terry L. Jackson Jr., she was abused in the process of um, bringing him to court allegedly and that he pulled over to the side of the road and proceeded to beat her okay and in that process she allegedly mentioned this situation which in every other newscast they have not released the friend's name but she was allegedly um beat and shared the information with Brittany Booker. Brittany Booker proceeded to go to the home of Terry L. Jackson Jr. Be at, after the incident and proceed to allegedly get the items that belonged to her friend from alleged friend from the home of Terry L. Jackson Jr when they were in the process of getting and retrieving items from the home that belonged to her friend, Terry L. Jackson came in through the back door allegedly and tried to stop them from taking the friend's belongings. He then proceeded to pick up a hammer and a beat, physically attack the friend, alleged the alleged friend, and Brittany Booker. Now, Brittany Booker sustained a lot of injuries, which she talks about on her Instagram on social media. She also begins to talk about how social media didn't back her in this domestic violence that she experienced and that if people do not have support for her and what she's gone through and her friend, alleged friend has gone through, then they can proceed to delete themselves off of her social media platform. And she goes on to talk about how they make it incredibly difficult for her to keep silent about what she's experienced and gone through. Now, these are very public posts. She also posts a picture of Terry L. Jackson stating that what he was accused of, what he, that there was an arrest warrant out for his arrest, and that he was a suspect at large 
for committing admits that he not only committed the crime, but he's not been arrested at that time. So all of this is posted and Brittany did a great job of posting exactly what transpired and that he was not arrested or found at that time. So now going to the media, this is what the media has given and shared. It says that um, Terry Jackson Jr. was accused of shooting and killing Brittany Booker in race and over the weekend and is still on the run. However, three women have now been charged in harboring and aiding him in two incidences. So this is where the story and the plot thickens. Now, these three women that were charged, they're not being charged just for aiding him. They're being charged in aiding him from the first incident that happened at the house where she was attacked with a hammer um, and sustained injuries and almost died. Both women were attacked. Allegedly, one, the friend ran and got help. Now, Brittany says that not only was she attacked, she was attacked while holding her child. So she was not physically attacking him. She was not aggressive towards him. She had her child in her hands and they were not expecting to run into him at that house. They were expecting that he most likely would be on the run because it was already a warrant out for his arrest for the incident that happened in the car when it was just the friend and him and he abused the friend. Okay, so um, it says that prosecutor said Booker, a mother of six, is one of Two women who Jackson beat in the head multiple times with a hammer on February the 27th. Police said that the encounter almost killed Booker. So she was almost killed. Nearly two months after the alleged hammer attack, police found Booker dead in her car near 13th and Villa on April the 24th with multiple injuries, including a gunshot wound to the head. Now, mind you, what I couldn't figure out with this story is Brittany Booker is the friend of the young lady that was allegedly in a relationship with Terry Jackson Jr. So two months later, he breaks into her home and takes her out of the front door and the ring captures it. And you'll see this here where he is, he sees the camera, he sees the ring, and he tells her to go. And then he proceeds to close her door to her home and she walks off in front of him. Not, And then not long after, that is when it's alleged that she was killed, but she was found not too long after that. Okay. The three women that have been arrested are Alicia Sykes, Carmelita Walker, and Diamond Hood. Now, Sykes proclaims that she is Jackson's cousin. The perpetrator. And that he called her and asked her for a ride to Texas shortly after the February incident. So February the 27th, he goes, he attacks them in the home, and then he calls Alicia Sykes and says, okay, I need you to get me to Texas. So shortly, that's not too long after the February incident. So he wasn't found, he's on the run, it's a warrant out for his arrest, he calls his cousin for help. Now, she said she's the cousin. Police said in early March that Sykes and Walker hopped in the car, traveled from Racing to Chicago, picked up Jackson, and dropped him off in Texas. So, basically, Sykes told police that Jackson returned to Racing shortly after being dropped off in Texas. Now, the court documents state that Hood and Jackson had a relationship. 
So Jackson is the perpetrator. And keep in mind that Sykes and Walker, because I don't want you to be confused, Alicia Sykes and Carmelita Walker are the two women that were arrested. So it's so basically what happened is um, Jackson called Sykes and Alicia Sykes, the cousin. And Alicia Sykes got in the car with Carmelita. Walker. So these two females are in the car with Jackson, the perpetrator. Okay, Terry Jackson. And so Terry Jackson gets in the car with them. And it says that in early March that Sykes and Walker, meaning Alicia and Carmelita, hopped in the car, traveled from Racing to Chicago. So they drove from Racing to Chicago. And that is where they picked up terry jackson and when they picked up terry jackson they dropped him off in texas so sykes told police that um the cousin told alicia told the police that jackson returned that terry returned to racing shortly after being dropped off in texas so they're in constant communication with him which is alicia and carmelita now Moving on to the third person, Diamond Hood. She's in a relationship with Terry Jackson. So she, her name is Diamond Hood. So Diamond Hood and Terry Jackson had a relationship. And Hood admitted to, um, to law enforcement, and I'm going to keep Diamond admitted to law enforcement, that she knew that Terry Jackson had assaulted Booker, Booker with, which is, had assaulted her with a hammer. Hood also, which is Diamond, also told officials that she let Jackson use her SUV and stay at her home. So, the documents also state that Jackson, that um, Terry Jackson used diamond hoods suv in the alleged february hammer attack and the april homicide so here he doesn't have transportation like i really want to break this down he didn't have transportation to go to Brittany's house so he borrows another black woman's car to diamond's car to attack her to attack Brittany. So basically, right, so you guys are getting the picture. Essentially, Diamond knew from the first incident that he used her car the first time when he attacked the two ladies with the hammer. He comes back with the car and she finds out what happened. So she still allows him to use her car again to attack Brittany Booker. In April and kill her and she's charged in connection to the homicide specifically because she admits that she knew and she knew both times. So why would you let him use your car? Why would you harbor him? Why would you keep stay in a relationship with a man that's physically attacked two women with a hammer and almost killed them? And this is a mother of six. Even if you didn't know that, you knew he attacked these women. What made you think, Diamond, that he wouldn't attack you or kill you? Because you knew, and it, this was your car, but you proceed to let him use the car again to attack Brittany Booker on that fateful April night. And if he didn't have your car, he wouldn't have been able to do that. So from February to April, she knew where he was. She knew that he was a criminal. She knew it was a warrant and she didn't call the police. Okay, so moving forward. 
Officials say Jackson is five foot nine and weighs 210 pounds. Police say if you see him, you should not approach him. So if you're watching this and you see him, you should not approach him. He has a distinctive tattoo on his neck that looks like a scorpion or a spider. It says the Rayson Police Department and the Rayson County District Attorney's Office will arrest and prosecute anyone found to have aided, aided Jackson in either of the two incidences. Any witnesses or citizens with any information are urged to call Racing Police Investigator and U.S. Marshal Task Force Officer Mike Seeger at 261-939-2437 or Lieutenant Friedel at 262-635-7761. Those who wish to remain anonymous may contact Crime Stoppers by phone at 262 262- 636-9330 through the P3 app. Also, Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,000 reward for information that leads to his whereabouts and arrest. So someone is aiding and abetting him because it appears that he clearly doesn't have the ability to drive um, or have a vehicle. And I'm sure he doesn't have a valid license seeing that it's a warrant out for his arrest. But what shocks me is that these three women uh, continue to aid him, knowing he was out here physically attacking other women, knowing that it could have been them. And that is crazy because had any one of them said, hey, let me turn this person in. This person's dangerous. I don't care if he is a cousin. I don't want him to hurt anyone. Let me get him some help. Um, Brittany Booker would still be alive. Now, what other people have failed to share is, and what everyone is kind of asking is, well, who is the friend? Where is the friend? Why did he attack Brittany Booker? If that is what you're thinking, I am right there with you. And that is where I, I have some things to share. So, he allegedly attack Brittany Booker and everyone is saying because this was her friend but her aunt posted a message on Facebook stating that Brittany Booker in fact actually allegedly is the girlfriend of the young lady that was attacked. And therefore, allegedly, he attacked his, I guess, the woman he was seeing, his ex-girlfriend's new girlfriend. Okay. And that makes sense. Now, that is allegedly, I do not know definitively if that is the case. There is a video of her having a very close relationship that looks like there could have been more than a friendship with another young lady who is a good friend of hers and definitely devastated over this developing news that she lost her friend. And one of the social media people, random people asked her like, are you the friend? you know, that that was attacked. And she said, no, I'm not the friend that was attacked. Um, and was very offended by the question. And I would be too, and you would be too, because people are grieving. And my comment to that is, in general, I understand everyone on social media is sharing news and sharing information, but there needs to be a level of decorum when people are going through loss. It is a way to look into information and find information without offending people who are going through an immediate loss. So being considerate is very important. That being said, moving forward, Brittany Booker's aunt posted a message saying that this was if this young lady was in fact her girlfriend that she was protecting and that he attacked her once because she's the girlfriend of this 
former girlfriend that he was with and he wasn't able to kill her and then he came back to try to finish the job allegedly now now this is kind of backed up the story is backed up a little bit because she posted a picture of the young lady and everyone is saying why is no one saying who she is and everyone that i've seen has not so you will hear that first here and demetria monique demetria monique was the young lady allegedly that was attacked on the during the first incident in february and she wasn't allegedly attacked that one time but that was in fact the second time if not more so um but that is the second time that we know of definitively That's not, I'm not quoting what the aunt said, but I am saying that the aunt did allude to that she did make the statement that Brittany Booker was, in fact, the girlfriend of the young lady attacked and not just a quote unquote. So that does explain a lot that does fill in a lot of holes because maybe he was jealous of Brittany because they had a different world. They had a a closer relationship he felt like Brittany was taking his girlfriend away and having a relationship with his girlfriend and now he was feeling jealous or feeling some type of way about it Demetrius page is down so I'm pretty sure that they are trying to hopefully the police are keeping her safe and saying hey listen let's reach out to demetria let's go ahead and keep her safe because she will most likely need to testify when they do find him and in this case and i'm sure she feels if they're if she, he killed my alleged girlfriend then i'm sure he's looking for her next so i hope that they find terry um really soon and that whoever is harboring him really thinks like hey look if he's gonna do this terry jackson is gonna do this to these women he'll do it to you too so this whole i'm a black woman and i'm not supporting other black women support yourself if nothing else, and turn him in because you don't want to have that. That's a safety issue for your life and you've got to care about your life. He did in April and when she succumbed, succumbed to her wounds and, you know, it cost her her life. I do believe the police should have put her in witness protection. Her family should have said, hey, listen, you're coming to stay with us after the initial attack.